Hello, I'm Jeff Gordon. I'm going to talk for just a few minutes about risk and insurance for contractors. And um, let me just begin by saying that we have the utmost respect for our contractors. Uh, you guys are in a tough business. Um, it is a complicated business, and uh, yet we have, you, uh, yeah, you build the homes that we live in, the offices that we work in, and the roads that we drive on. And so we just have a tremendous respect for how complicated and truly how risky your business is. So we want to take some of the uh, mystery out of uh, those bills that you uh, put in a file that just say insurance on them and show you how they break down and how they all kind of come together again. Um, so contractors, broadly speaking, uh, in the insurance world, we break down into two categories. One is what we call general contractors, and that would be um, any contracting operation where greater than 25% of your revenues are paid to others, that is to specialists. Who are those specialists? Subcontractors or artisan contractors. This, of course, these are electricians, plumbers, HVAC, uh, drywall painting and uh, roofing and so forth. So these specialists are the subcontractors. Generally speaking, a company, uh, let's say a million dollars of revenue, um, uh, let's say, uh, you know, five employees, a general contractor is going to pay 25 to 50 percent more for insurance than the artisan contractor is. Why is that? It all comes down to control. A general contractor is relying on other companies to get a lot of the work done in a, uh, in an op in, on a given job site, um, and because of that, lessening of control, the insurance, the risk of something going wrong, in fact, is greater. Uh, there are ways that we can uh, control that, that additional cost that I'll get to at the very end, but uh, that is broadly speaking how we break down contractors. Insurance. Uh, general liability, that's the big one. That's the one when someone says, show me a certificate of insurance, they want to know that you have general liability insurance and workers' compensation. We'll get to that in just a minute. But general liability is broken down into two types of uh, things that can go wrong. One is operations. This is on site. Uh, the, the example here is, you know, nail gun goes through a 2x4, nobody realizes that there is a hot water pipe on the other side of that 2x4 and you've got water throughout a house where perhaps a, um, a, a renovation is being done. Completed operations means you've left, you've been gone for six months. The classic example here, this happened on the Cape several years ago. Uh, new deck, homeowner loved the new deck, invited all the friends over for a party. There were about a hundred people on the deck and it failed. A lot of people were hurt, that's a completed operations. So guess where they're going to go when, when all these people hire lawyers, guess where they're going to go? They're going to go to the guy that built the deck even though he left six months ago. So that's what general liability is for. It provides defense coverage whether or not you are at fault or negligent provides defense coverage. Uh, next is uh, property coverage. This is optional. Some people need it, some don't. It depends on your operation. It depends on how much value you have in your trailer or at your shop or on site. Um, what's the value of your tools? If they're just you know, power tools, hand tools that you're going to burn through every few years, you probably don't need property coverage and you can just self-insure that. On the other hand, if you have expensive property, you've got expensive tools in your trailer shop or site, then you may want insurance for those, but it is entirely optional. Next is an installation floater. Installation floater is for that load of wood, that load of copper, that load of whatever that is going into a site, but you haven't billed the client for it yet. And so you still own this, and if something goes wrong while you are installing, and that all disappears in a fire or something like that, you can, you can assign a specific valuation to an installation floater. Um, these um, are job specific, and if you have any questions whether you want to insure something like that, just give us a ring. Auto insurance. Whether you own your own vehicles or whether everybody's supposed to have their own, auto insurance can be complicated for truck for contractors. Are you plowing in the winter? You know, there's a lot of different things that you can be doing. Do you have a bucket truck? Are you loading? Are you loading and unloading any any materials? Do you have a crane? That sort of thing. Um, and then finally, workers' compensation. One thing I'll say about workers' compensation, very simply, somewhere along the way, somebody has to have coverage. So if you are a subcontractor that elects not to have coverage, but you then work for a general contractor. If you don't have coverage, the general contractor is going to be charged for the time that you are on that job. And so oftentimes general contractors will require subcontractors to have workers' compensation so that they don't get charged. The only example where you can exclude yourself from workers' compensation if you have a corporation and you exclude the officers or directors or people that own 25% or more of the corporation. This is complicated. We can help you through that. Um, workers' comp can be especially expensive for contractors, so it pays to have someone working with you that knows about it. The last thing I'll just say is bonds. Um, bonds are, uh, in a contracting environment, typically if it is a performance bond, which is the most common type of bond that you'll see, a performance bond really isn't a type of insurance, but what it is, 
It's a credit check. It's an extensive credit check that says you are financially capable of completing a job that you're bidding on. And so the performance job is for the actual job, and a bid bond actually comes before that and says that this person is actually qualified to meet the requirements of this job. Last thing that I'll say is oftentimes there are contracts necessary between general contractors and subcontractors. We have right on our contractor's uh, web page uh, where this video is a sample contract that uh, we think makes a lot of sense for, uh, co for general contractors to use with their subcontractors. Naturally, you want to have legal counsel review it for your own specific needs, but we give, it, we give it to you as a template for beginning a discussion with your own attorney to see if this is right for you. So we encourage you to use those resources. Otherwise, always look to Gordon Insurance at agordon.com for insurance resources and helping you control the cost of risk to your business. Thanks for watching.